Uh, good evening, our viewers. God bless you for joining us with this wonderful teaching tonight. Uh, this is the third uh, series of the ongoing teaching that uh, the Spirit of God led, and we've been hosting our wonderful daddy in the Lord, Pastor David Matthews, and um, we um uh, to uh, continue where we stopped last i mean that's last second series that's the last series that's about two weeks ago um please if you are joining or if you want to join the zoom just minutes me behind the scene and i can send you the links but at the same time we are live on Facebook. pastor Didi Matthew, good evening sir good evening god's uh, servant i appreciate you thank you for Bringing us, bringing me to this meeting this evening for yes, the invitation. I appreciate the fact that um, from my mouth, the word of God is going forth on a continual basis, Amen. daily basis to bless the people of God. So I appreciate those of you also for joining us at the meeting tonight. God bless you. Um, so to proceed uh, from where we stopped. Uh, I think last two Thursdays ago, we, we were able to unveil, we were able to unveil the third seal, the third seal that is in Revelation chapter six. Yes, sir. So I okay, yeah. have we finished the third seal? Are uh, we done, or we're about to do it? No, we're about to. We, we just we just explained the that was verse six. We explained the. Uh, eight pounds of each for this, which is okay. six pounds of value for this. Okay, I think I, I think we have done it. I think we've done it. If I'd explained it, then we have done it. Yes, sir. So uh, I don't know if we can. Uh, I know we can't finish everything, but as the Lord can lead you, sir. Um, mm. Because I know you still uh, have a program. I think. Yeah. We won't be able to finish all the seals yes, because the seals leads us to the seventh seal. Yes. So we, we can do fourth seal today. Okay. Maybe every week we do these seals so that maybe at a later time when you want to put all these things together, uh, you want to put them together for uh, to form a, a particular message. So yes, sir. let's talk about that. Yes, um, viewers, God bless you for joining. Uh, like I said, we are hosting Pastor Dele Matthews and a uh, wonderful man, humble, and uh, God has been so busy. So, uh, Pastor, sir, it's uh, over to you. Yeah. yeah. So, I've been talking about the seals, and the seals relate to the, um, I will call it the enablement of God for man to come back to the throne. Okay. Life, um, because uh, you can see that um, it was the cherubim that the Lord used to block the way to the tree of life, and where the tree of life is leading us, ultimately, sorry, ultimately, where the tree of life is leading us is to the yes. throne. Yes, sir. So the tree buried twelve manner of fruits, and we have to eat the fruits. The last um, fruit that we have to eat is called Benjamin, the son of my right hand. Mm. That's how we manifest that we, are, we see that we have been taken to far above. Uh, we were made to sit down together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Um, this is what that place tells us. So in order for us to get back there, how we get back to the tree of life is by revelation knowledge. It is not by, we say, okay, we have opened the door for you, come in, come in. Uh, or maybe, okay, uh, Cherus, get away from that place, let them pass. No, mm. right understanding. So, as the, as the lamb broke one of, the, one of its seals, we had a voice saying, Come and see. The lamb broke and said, Come and see. And then the lamb broke and they said, Come and see. Four times mm. before preachers said, Come and see. Because the children were four. So, the four, they had to, had to grant man access. Okay. 
how to grant man access into the understanding of divine life. So that's why you see four of them saying, come and see, come and see, come and see. But Pastor, is there any relationship between the four children with the uh, 12 gates dividing to three? Is there any relationship? I don't know. Just mm. There's a relationship between it because when you look at series six, you see the angel that is bearing the seal of God. Um, one thing I always say is that when it comes to symbologies, it flows like water, it can change shape. But we have to understand that it is God, what God is speaking here is what is speaking here. Mm -hmm. During the ceiling, the ceiling of the 144,000, 12,000 per for each tribe. When we get to that ceiling, we see that there an angel that brought the seal of God. So it is this seal that the Lord was putting that, that angel brought. And then we were supposed to see the servants of, of the Lord God in their foreheads, which is what the seals, the seals being opened is trying to do. That's what they are trying to do, um, to destroy and break totally and destroy the natural life so that the spiritual life can, the natural sinful bios human life. Okay. That the spiritual Zoe life of God can arise in the saints. So, um, so where it work, where they are together is that those 12,000, one for 4,000 that were sealed, you know, is 12,000 sealed in every tribe. That is what brought the one for 4,000. 12,000 times 12 is one for 12,000. Mm -hmm. So, that ceiling is the same seal that Jesus was opening here. But in that place, it was described as the seal. In fact, he called the seal of God. And I saw another angel rising from the east, bearing the seal of the living God. It's this same seal that he's talking about. And then he was sealing their foreheads 12 times. Mm. That is the tree of life. That is the showbread. That is the gate. Wow. Um, so, so it's the same operation. So, Pastor, the come and see, is it just to come? Is it about? What's um, is it about the... unveiling? Yeah, it's unveiling, it's an invitation to revelation to see okay. so that we can become. Okay. And for example, in the fourth seal, which we are meant to discuss today, we see that he said, Come and see. And what you see there from verse seven, uh, from verse seven, he saw a death riding upon a pale horse. The King James Version describes it as a pale horse, but in the Greek, it is called chloros. Okay. Chloros means light green, green or life. Green signifies life, vegetation. You know, so death is riding upon life. So death is bringing, I mean, it is life that is the energy of divine life that is at work in us. That is bringing us the death of the natural man. And you will see that this man, this horse rider has in his hand a great sword that by him, a default part of men may be killed. Oh, okay. People think, oh, for a quarter of people in the world will be killed. No, that's not what he's talking about. Oh. The work we have been experiencing thus far, up to that point, have been, we have explained the first seal, the first horse rider, the second seal, the second horse rider, the third seal, the third horse rider, the fourth seal, the fourth horse rider. So this fourth one, this fourth horse rider now, this fourth horse rider now, is mm -hmm. to be, is to finish his work. And his, his work is the fourth part. The fourth, fourth. Okay, let me come again. Okay. Uh -huh. I want to destroy these four articles. Okay. I have a pen here. Instead, they left the toothpick in my, in my room. And I have the back cover of my, the protector of my phone and my wristwatch. So I have those four things that I want to destroy. Okay. So in the first seal, I, I, I worked on this. In the second seal, I worked on this. In the third seal, I worked on this. How many is remaining? One, One. quarter is remaining. Mm -hmm. 
You get that? Yes, sir. Three quarter has been dealt with. Okay. Yeah, one quarter is removed. One quarter is removed. Yes, sir. That one quarter is called a fourth. And that way we're saying one quarter is a fourth. Yes, yeah, one fourth. Uh, one, one, one fourth or a fourth. So that one fourth is the last work being done on natural man, on man, the spiritual man that he has naturality inside him. Mm, okay. When I say to destroy the, a fourth part of mankind, he's saying that he wants to finish the work. This fourth part that is remaining, that is what he's working on. That's what he's saying. Okay, sir. So in other words, death has been exercised on this. Mm -hmm. Death has been exercised on this two quarter. Death has been exercised on this three quarter. Remaining one quarter. Mm. Yeah. So that is the fourth part. Okay, sir. Don't mean that. And then the, the death that is bringing, you can see that he's bringing a sword. He's bringing a sword to finish the work. You know how you know what work is it trying to finish? He wants to destroy those elements in our souls that are anti God, that we have gotten from our culture, philosophies, nations, education, and our genes. Mm -hmm. Things that are rising in us continually to make us disobedient to the will of God. We are dead with three quarters of them in the first three seeds. The last one is a quarter. So he's just talking, it's a redo, it's symbology. He's trying to say that he wants to destroy the last part, the quarter. The quarter of men, the last quarter within man that is supposed to be destroyed is what is being destroyed there. It doesn't mean that a quarter, a quarter of physical men that, oh, they're going to destroy on quarter the population of the UK, on quarter the population of the US, Nigeria, Canada. But that's what we're talking about. It's not physical. Yes, sir. It's a spiritual terminology. And how is it going to destroy the Let's see. It is going to destroy it then. And power was given to them to over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword. Mm -hmm. The sword is the sword that attends to us as we decide to go through the gates. What is that sword? It is the affliction that comes as a result of hearing the word. Okay. It's a natural man. For example, if you hear the word honesty, you hear about honesty, 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 truthfulness. Ah, you'll be very hard to God. Ah, so I can be honest. Then they will not bring temptation to you. Mm. So you will not be, sometimes you will fall, sometimes you will rise, sometimes you will fall, but if you don't give up, eventually you will overcome. But in order for them to train you to overcome, you will suffer. That suffering is that. For example, honesty, maybe I broke a cup and I learned about honesty. So they said, who broke this cup? I said, it's me. They give me a dirty slap. So, but my friend that did something wrong, he said it's not him. So they left him. He is not going through his own cross. He's not going through his, 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 uh, his thing. But I chose to go through. So in other words, as I begin to suffer and suffer, one day that thing will break. I will not be tempted to be dishonest again because there's nothing they have not yet done to me. You so, understand? I have suffered everything. So I'm not, I will, I'm not afraid anymore. You understand? Yes. So that is the sword. And by farming. Um, with hunger. To kill with sword and hunger. For example, you know there are people that today they don't eat more than once a day. Why? Because they have been they have gone through situations where when they were young, they suffered. Maybe they had a stepmother. Mm. And they didn't used to eat more than one day, once mm. a day. Mm. So that become a part of them. They are not, they don't value food like that. You understand? It's easy for them to even fast. <laughs> so when you, for example, now let's look at sexual temptation. When I have Let's say my wife traveled or somebody else's wife traveled. And then, or maybe in a, we are in a strange place where uh, for about one year, maybe I traveled. And then the sexual urge keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. And keeps coming. Then I begin to hunger and hunger and hunger for every one day. And then I don't, I don't attend to that hunger. Mm. So what am I doing? I will kill that sex urge with hunger. He's crying, but he's not satisfied. One day to die and leave me alone. 
Oh. You get that? Yes, so sir. they are killing it with hunger. And then with the beast of the earth, the beast of the earth is the bestial nature inside natural man. Inside the man that is not born again, inside the world. So God will use the world to deal with us. Oh. So that's in the story. So that's it. That's what that verse is. And how you know that this is not natural, um, that this is what I've been saying is true, is that by the fifth seal, you see that the souls that were under the altar were resurrected. Let's see, fifth seal, and said, uh, give me for verse nine. When I had opened the fifth seal and I saw under the altar the souls of those who are being slain or killed, did you see that in the fifth seal there was no more calling, say, come and see? Mm. Why? Because the four work have been complete. The four cherubs mm. have granted man access into revelation and experience. You know, revelation and experiencing of those four places. By the time we get to the, by the time we get to the fourth seal, the man has been thoroughly killed. The natural man, the natural tendency of man, had been thoroughly dealt with, so he's killed. So we see his soul under the altar. What altar? The altar of burnt offering. Okay. It's called the brazen altar. Oh. It's called the brazen altar. Out of all the, the sacrifices of Israel, the offerings of Israel, the burnt offering is the, is the strongest offering. That is where you give yourself to God. And that's what jo, um, Paul was talking about. I was sitting there for brethren by the name of God. I present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Mm -hmm. That living sacrifice is the bond of mm -hmm. how they used to do it in the Old Testament. Is that oh, maybe I have a very big cow. One day I'm so excited with my God. I say, ah, I love this Jehovah. And I'll just go and take that big cow and just take it to the priest. And the priest will kill it and then they will burn it. Nobody will eat anything out of it. It's like a waste. Mm -hmm. So Paul was saying that the only way we can do the reasonable act of worship that we can do is not to go and put ourselves and kill ourselves and burn ourselves, but to present our bodies, yield it to God. And when we yield our bodies to God, what is happening is that we're sacrificing the elements that, are, that will have stopped us from, from, from gaining the life of Christ. For example, I just talked about sexual matters. If I win in that area, then I've given that part it's in the area of honesty, I've given that part to God. In the area of stealing, I've given that part to God. So this is what he's talking about. So by the fourth seal, the natural man is gone. Um, Death had been ministered to the natural man. So we see him arising in the fifth seal from the uh, altar, ready to collect from under the raising altar, ready to collect the sacrifice. I mean, rather, ready to collect the reward. So they are asking God, how long, O oh Lord, holy and true, will thou not avenge us against those who dwell upon the earth? That's what dwell I want to upon ask. the earth. Are, Does yeah. that mean that those people they are no more alive? As in they are they are no more they are alive. alive. They are alive. They are alive. Some some that they may be not well, some of them may not be alive. It's a state, it's a spiritual state. Okay. For example, now. God told Paul, God told Paul that, okay, uh, you, have to, you have to go and meet Caesar. So instead of you to have obtained immortality, he had to go to the sword of Caesar. So he died. He, it was like one of the souls that, are, that are out, were coming out of the altar. You know, he said, I run my race, I finished my course. Right now he's waiting for me, the crowning with life. Which the Lord will give to me, not only to me, but to those who love his appearing on that day. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yes, sir. So what he's saying is that, like the souls which rose up from the altar, who are saying, Lord, justify us against the dwellers on the earth. Saying, Lord, I am ready for the crown of life. But God said, Wait, until okay. the number of your brethren which shall be slain as you are, are fulfilled. Okay. So if there's a, there may be people now today on the earth who have finished their course. And they have obtained, but God is not crowned there with immortality now. So he's saying, wait. Mm. And that does not mean that does not mean that one cannot do translocation by location. 
It doesn't mean that one cannot go from here to Scotland to go and give for somebody. It doesn't mean that one cannot work in the school. It doesn't mean that one cannot work, raise the dead. You can raise the dead, you can do all those things. But it doesn't mean that one has been granted immortality. That is a that taste is, of the past. That is not what to. immortality means. That is, that is not what it means. That is not what it means. So God is waiting. God told them to wait. The number of their brethren which should be killed as they were. And where is where you say I saw under the altar the soul of men that were slain for the word means that word slain means that uh, the works of flesh or death has been uh, wiped off the of their mm. flesh. It's not really means that they've died physically. No, 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 it doesn't mean that they died physically. It doesn't mean that they died physically. And then another thing it does that I need to explain is that during the during the time in the Old Testament, whenever they wanted to, to kill the offering for sin, after you have laid your hand upon the sacrifice, you have confessed your sin, they will now kill the, uh, the lamb, and they use the God to pray. They will, they will put it on your right ear, and then you put it on your right thumb, the toes of the big toe of your feet. They put it there. That is that. They are praying for revelation for you and for accurate work, accurate mm -hmm. conversation, accurate lifestyle. They will now pour the remaining blood and pour it under the, the altar. You get that? If that is the allusion that they were making. So mm -hmm. that thing that took away the sin poured on that mm -hmm. altar. Mm -hmm. This is where the souls, and why we say the life of the flesh is in the blood. I've given it upon the altar as an atonement for your souls. Mm. So, this is what it means. Says God, this is what it means. So that is what it means. That so they rose from the altar, ready to collect their gifts, ready to collect their that's a gift. What they have worked for, their attainment, to collect immortality, to collect the life of Christ. That's why they wait and, and they said, "Oh Lord God, only oh answer." How long will we have to wait? He said, wait a little. And uh, that is also an allusion to Zechariah chapter one. I advise all our viewers to go and read Zechariah chapter one. Then you see the four, you see the horse riders. And then you see the angel that showed Zechariah this and saying, Oh Lord, only and true. How long? That same prayer that they prayed in the oh. How long will you not make Jerusalem, you know, turn their captivity and all that? So this is the, the book of Revelation did not, does not exist on its own. It is tied to other scriptures, symbology, symbolism of other parts of scripture. So one will not understand that book when they won't understand the symbolism of this. Yeah. The relationship is very mm. short, simple, and powerful. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, before yeah. I allow you to go. He said, uh, I saw under the altar of the soul of dead that was still for the world. And for the testimony which they heard. Mm. So the testimony is the, um, is, can you explain? Um, okay. Now, the slaying doesn't mean that they were physically killed alone. Okay. In another place in the book of Revelation, you will see that they were killed and they were called martyrs. The word matter means a witness. Okay. You see all the same thing that we're talking a witness. The word to be a matter means to be a witness. For example, we have received the message of the life of Christ. Okay. And then death will come to the natural man so that the life of Christ can come. That death is what John is alluding to here by saying the souls of those who are slain. Okay. Your naturality, which is based on your soul, will have to be destroyed. Okay. So that soul is the souls of those who have been slain. So mm -hmm. now, 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 it does not mean that they were killed physically. It does much more mean that they were, it's a symbolic, a metaphorical um, kind of death. Now, 
There were people who were killed for that willingly. They say, okay, if you want to kill me, kill me. They know that not everybody, for example, people say, ah, like people that are killed in Boko Haram. Uh, no, uh -huh. those ones are not the souls. Mm. They were not, you can't compare them because those ones, they don't want to die. It even from Paul, I said, ah, I'm ready to be off fast. Yeah. I understand. So, he said to, die, he said to, to leave his game. Hmm? He said to leave his, he said to leave his game and to die, or to leave. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So check. what God is comparing to that death is that if you, if temptations to live the natural life come to you and you choose to live the life of Christ, God counts it as death to you. Death. That you have died. You died in that area. You mm -hmm. understand? Yes, sir. And then, so, and then you are a witness to the life of Christ. You are, because death is a transaction. Okay. Yes, sir. Many years ago, I heard about a, one of my friends and uh, grandmother. Her grand, his grandmother, his own mother was very sick. Very, very sick up to the point of death. Then one night when the sickness was so severe, the mother of his mother, that is his grandmother, asked God that God should take her rather than take her daughter. Mm. She is old, that God take me instead of. So she made a transaction. Mm. That night the mother died, I mean the grandmother died and then the next morning the mother began to get well. Okay. Real life story. So, so when I'm supposed to lie and I don't lie, and I bear the consequences of telling the truth, hmm. God counts it as death. When I'm supposed to fight back for myself and I refuse to fight back, God counts it as death. Interesting. And as bearing the testimony of Christ. So these are those souls that, that died. They were under the altar. That is the, the work. And of course, all the things that are spoken on the book of Revelation are actually the workings of the tabernacle items. You understand? They will talk about that later. But the first the seals, the seals, the first um, four seals refer to the tabernacle, uh, to the operations of the altar, of, I mean, of the brazen altar. And it also refers to the working of the four cherubs. Four cherubs who filled and finished their work in the fourth seal. All of us will experience this. This is what I'm saying. It's not a historical, it's not a, ah, some apostles in those days, no. All of us will experience the operation of the first horse rider at the opening of the first seal and at the instigation of the voice of the children to come and see. We will receive Christ, but we will think that is all. And then we will now eventually know that that's not all. That's not all. Then eventually we will see um, war, war in our souls, the second horse rider. Then later, you know, war in our souls, our souls want to go this way, our spirit wants to go this way, the natural man wants to go that way, the spirit man wants to go this way. Then eventually, we will receive the operation of the third horse rider, which is a farming, whereby we will buy the product of, uh, uh, the genuine products of the feast of Passover and of the feast of Pentecost. A quarter of, uh, I mean, Three measures of barley for a penny, I mean, I mean. A, a, uh -huh, and a measure of wheat for a penny. Then we'll now see that the way is not yet open for the feast of tabernacles, cutting on the oil, oil and the wine. The wine. So what will now happen is that eventually we will experience the fourth horse rider. The fourth horse rider comes to finish the entire work to kill us. So the third part, the first part have been have been done, the second part has been done, the fourth part has been done. So the fourth part of man is the one that the fourth seal, the first, the fourth horse rider want to kill. He wants to finish the work. So the last part, which is the fourth part, which has not been done, is what he came to do. To bring total destruction to the natural man. So that was why a great sword was given to him to kill a fourth of man. 
It is not a physical killing out of man. You understand? You're talking about me. I've explained the first, first horse rider, second horse rider, third horse rider, and the fourth horse rider is coming to kill the fourth part that they have not yet dealt with in me. You understand? That fourth part has not yet been dealt with. So that's what the fourth horse rider comes to do in me. So by the time he brings death to it, then I die, then I rise. We Pastor, rise as we die, yeah? Is that what the, is, is our reward, I mean, what the fourth horse rider came to do? Or we is do? to bring the, the final to, death to us. Okay. Is it what, is it, is it the reward is this oil and wine? Uh, yeah, the, the reward is the oh. oil and wine because that is this feast of tabernacle. That is where we have immortality and fullness of Christ. And okay. of Christ, totally. So that is what we're crying for when they rose okay. from the experience okay. of the fourth horse rider. In the fifth seal, they have been poured. Their souls have been poured out like the animal that was slain for sin. They have been put under the altar. So they were, we saw them rising from under the altar and saying, Oh Lord, crown out his life. Because mm -hmm. we get to rule, make it their priesthood. Let us begin to rule over those who dwell on the earth. Give us the fullness, the glory that you promised us. Give us. Was, was it what uh, the, 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 uh, the soul that was hurt? Was it like a death that was hurt of their soul at that time? No, we we're just talking about the operation of the spirit, whereby you you you, you cannot resurrect yourself. Okay. After you have died, you wait. You understand? They were in the place where they died. Where, what do you mean by when they died? I'm talking symbolically now. I get it. I get it. Like it's the, the death and the corruption in them has been uh has been done away with. Yes. For example, that place is a. Uh, you keep slapping this man. This man doesn't talk. He will not. He will not fight back. They will slander him. You say, okay, if they say so. so maybe that is it. You be looking at this and say, ah, these guys. That is what the Bible talked about. The two witnesses that they will be dead for three days and a half, and then after three days and a half, they, everybody will see their dead corpses mm. on the streets. Street. So the dead corpses is that. These guys, they don't have power anymore to, to do evil. Mm. So they don't, they don't, if you slap them, they will just be, they'll just be looking at thank you. God. Thank God. Because there is nothing, there is nothing called flesh within them that anymore in them. Yeah, so that is the state of burial. God has not raised them up yet. Right. They have been dead, they are buried under the altar. That is what they describe also as. They will see their dead bodies. All the world will see their dead bodies. That means you will see believers everywhere in that nature of Christ. Not fighting for their own. Not committing any sin that could advance their cause and make them to be great in life. Not trying to kill other people so that they can advance or slander other people. You see, or they're in it. You know? You know? Are you a fool? They will get to offices, political offices, they will not take one dime. How can they slap you and they're just looking like that? And you're just looking, these guys are dead. Or Danny Bobo is a Kai, Kai. All of my be more day. Kai. You have no be more day. That was what he meant when the Bible says the two witnesses are. That they will be killed. They will be killed and they will just. That dead that they died, that these guys died, he's talking. That's what he's using another symbology of the death of the two witnesses. Pastor, to be honest with you, it's good to engage you like this, or else <laughs> we don't do. <laughs> we don't have um, heard this thing that you said it many times. To be honest with you, mm. this is <laughs> where. So that is the way it is. Ah. The most times that I can understand this scripture. Yeah. So the Bible says, and he opened their understanding that they understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You see, one, one thing God is doing is that by the time he opens this thing to us, and we now see that this is the path to immortality. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> this is the path to the tree of life. Everybody will now say, okay, since we know now, before we didn't know, 
Now that we now know, mm, let me follow. That's how you now see a lot of believers. They will be obeying the voice of the seventh angel. Eh? This is the part. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, let's go. Oh, yeah. We, we submit ourselves to the operation of the first horse rider, submit ourselves to the operation of the second horse rider, because we are, we are waiting for glory. We know what we are waiting for. That glory is at the end of the line. At the last time, the operation of the fourth horse rider comes. And then you die. They say, don't worry, don't resurrect yourself. Oh. Don't, don't worry. Until we now see the Lord raising them up, and they will now be asking for the, the uh, workings. Okay. Time has gone, but I have them. a question. But time has gone. Okay. Just give me one of the questions. Let me quickly answer. Uh, is there a relationship between what you just said right now with? Uh, Second Thessalonians 2, where he talks about uh, uh, chapter 3, let no man deceive you by means, for that day shall not come. He said, Jack, come, come before you, evil force, and that man of sin will be the son of perdition. Because you're saying something this time that uh, the more you are sentencing, the more uh, things you meet, the more flesh you meet. And because you resist the flesh, then you will come. More is it uh, the the uh, what it means by the falling away? What that falling away in that scripture means is that there will be so many distractions that will come. Falling away there means if there is a falling away, it's talking about the people of God that some of them will be deceived and then they will fall away from the faith. Yeah, is it because uh, they are trying to bring us closer? That is why. No, it's because they did not allow themselves to be subjected to the activities of the horse riders. Mm -hmm. so, That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Those submit to the activities of the horse riders, you are a Christian. After a while, okay, for example, let's say they bring this temptation, I fall, 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 I fall a thousand times. After the after a while, I'll start saying that mm, it doesn't matter. Yes, has covered me, Jerry. Mm, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that that person will fall away. That's just a small example. Like they slap, like, like they slap somebody instead of him to restrict himself with the act to the slap. Yeah. So, then later so, they will now say that they will now look for scripture and say that's the way we are supposed to behave. That's so, what will be falling. So because the person is not aligned to uh the, 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 the life of God to take life. over the canality of his soul. Yeah. So he will now, because he will be, because he will be continually right. condemned. Okay. Because, because he will be continually condemned, he will now look for scripture to back it up that what he's doing is all right. Okay. That's the way it is. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, man of God. Thank you, <laughs> <clears throat> God bless you, Pastor Billy Matthews. Thank you very much. I'll see you to the end of the year. I'll see you as my father. What you are giving up to me and to all of us is what uh, if, I, if somebody today wants to choose the father of the body, the description of what it means, because you are able to explain giving us blessings that God has given you. Uh, thank you very much. I don't know how to appreciate you, my eyes. I before I was blind. Yes, now I can see. The other city, I'm not. <laughs> uh, if you are watching us, you know I'm very big person. I'm telling you my mind, and I'm not ashamed to be just to know this for the first time. Uh, we know that it's good when you want to learn and you see someone who can put it through sincerely from his bottom of the heart. Pastor Billy Matthew, God bless you. God bless you, Monica. People call it for the house. God bless you. Part five will come up also in two weeks' time. And it is mm. Pastor, uh, uh, can you help us bless people watching? Lord, I thank you for your people that are on uh, Zoom and Facebook that are watching. Mm. Lord, the Bible says, and he open in their understanding and so that they could understand the scriptures. Mm. This is an operation of the Spirit of God in our lives. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, open the understanding of your people so that they can understand the scripture. That beyond what our thoughts, they will get it. 
Amen. Amen. Much more they will experience this revelation. Amen. It will not just be comprehended in the mind Amen. or in the heart, but it will control the heart, control their lives. Amen. As well. Amen. God bless you, sir. Good night. God bless you, man of God. God bless you.